is to thank you for allowing me to be your representative at annual conference this year. Uh, it was the 235th session held right here in Hampton, so it couldn't have been more convenient. And um, we have a theme, a new theme for the year, and it was uh, very noticeable throughout the, the conference, including the Episcopal address that our bishop gave for her first annual conference. If you remember, Bishop Sharma D. Lewis joined us in September of 2016 as the presiding bishop in the uh, Virginia Conference. I must say she is anointed, very, very um, enthused and on fire to be the pastor of the United Methodist here in Virginia and uh, a willing shepherd for her flock that she has been given here. The theme is a new thing, and the verse that they base the theme on is Isaiah 43, 19. It says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now, Sharma said that God wants us to do a new thing here in the Virginia Conference. And she reminded us, if you remember, Bishop Cho very often reminded, encouraged, and presented methods <clears throat> of praying. She said Bishop Cho's thing was prayer. And she said for the last four years while he was serving as our uh, bishop, that he was having you pray, and that was to pre prepare you for her because her thing is Jesus and making disciples. And she says in that, we want to commit to God's ways, we want to teach Jesus, we want to make disciples, and we want to commit to the work of the kingdom, deciding that the souls of our brothers and sisters are more important than our agendas. Now usually when you go to annual conference, there are a few things that the folks back home like to hear about. We have in the conference this year 50 retirees and the total number of years of service for those 50 retirees was 1,430 years of combined service here in the Virginia Annual Conference. It was also reported that there are five new faith com uh, communities in the conference, two of which are online. And there is a program called Glory Sightings. And this is the highlighting of new ways the Virginia Conference United Methodist Churches are reaching into their communities. During the conference, we saw three or four of these Glory Sightings. And the first thing that came to mind is we need to get our group together with our Peninsula East End Church that is now worshiping here at Trinity and do a glory sighting video and send it to Ms. Sharma. And that will be shared in the conference because we are doing exciting things. And she wants those things to be shared so that it will encourage others to find things that they can do to include the members of the community in the local church. You can't have an annual conference without some kind of voting. And I must say that Sharma did a fantastic job, this being her first annual conference. She handled the conference efficiently, effectively, and expediently. I had my mouth hanging open about the middle of Saturday afternoon. We weren't behind. And usually by Saturday morning, sometimes the, the uh, break for lunch on Saturday, we are already behind and have to try to catch up before we adjourn at the end of the conference. But one of the most important of the votings, uh, it was five sealed votes of constitutional amendments for general conference. And these votes were not counted. They were not shared with us and it was for amendments on the Constitution. Two were on that gender clarification of male and female defi uh, definition, uh, and that's something like our United Methodist men is defined, United Methodist women is defined. We know it's a woman's group and a, a gentleman's group. Uh, there were some places in the, uh, 
in our, I guess it's discipline, that need, need to be clarified there. One was for the election of general conference delegates. Apparently in some conferences out in the middle section of the country, they were appointing delegates and they're supposed to be elected. So that was a clarification. And then there were two uh, dealing with the election and the accountability of our bishops. Another thing you need to keep your ears open for, we used to hearing about the uh, heritage and places like that for our retired uh, members or people of age, the United Methodist Homes for the Aged, which was established in 1944. It now has about 1,200 residents. It has a new name and a new logo. And if you want to be in touch with the Homes for the Aged, it's now called Pinnacle Living. They are going to explore and do things that make the latter part of life's journey more exciting, more um, inclusive, more pleasure, really, for the individuals involved in these places. So pinnacle living is the new word for the Homes for the Ages in the Virginia Conference. Now, I don't know how many of you remember the Potato Project. I remember back many years ago when the Society of St. Andrews was initiated by two of our local ministers who got their heads together and say, hey, it's an awful lot of produce out there because it doesn't fit specific qualifications for sale in the stores. It's just laying there and rotting. We can use that. And they started picking those leftover or scooping up those leftover potatoes and it branched out into tomatoes and all kinds of vegetables. Well, every year now, for some time, there has been a potato drop at the Virginia Annual Conference. This year was the last year for a potato drop at our annual conference. On 7.30 a.m., 52,000 pounds of potatoes mm. were divided into 10 bags which equals approximately 100,000 servings of potatoes. That's just one item that they deal with. They deal with numerous gleanings and gatherings throughout the year. Their ministry is gonna continue, just the potato drop is stopping. Another thing the local people are usually interested in are the kits that are brought to annual conference. This year, there were 46,443 kits total. And that includes all of them, the health kits, the school kits, the layouts, everything. Annual conference usually takes a special offering. They had a goal of $200,000. This year, they collected 113,000. And apparently, that was okay because they didn't pass the plate a second time. <laughs> what? One of the required things, though, or, or that happens at the end of the annual conference session is the appointing of pastors. Now, the, the second week that uh, I was back from annual conference, I reported that Don was reappointed here at Trinity. I'll just re it, reiterate that right now. And he is going to remain here at least another year. We'll probably go for more than that. I hear some yeses already, yeah. <laughs> but I was sitting in the car getting ready to leave the parking lot and I got a telephone call and it was Don. He says, am I still the pastor? <laughs> I said, yes, you're still the pastor here at Trinity and we welcome you back and are glad to have you and Nancy back with us at least for another year. The thing, yes. The thing is we can be fairly sure but until that final stamp of approval by the bishop at the end of conference, you're still a little bit uneasy because I have seen things change at annual conference within the last couple of days, okay? So anyway, we are fortunate to have them back with us. I will say that it was a very spirited annual conference. Bishop Lewis is a dynamic minister and we need to book her as soon as possible. I'm sure she's already booked, you know, well into her years. 
but we need to get her here as soon as possible, and I suggest that we invite our um, glory sighting group uh, to join us. She is very dynamic, and her Episcopal sermon on Friday afternoon, she left the pulpit, you know, the staging area. She came out into the congregation and greeted her people, hugged them, loved them, shook hands. You know, some people are not too much on hugging, but anyway, she was there, and if you wanted a hug, she can give a nice hug. She made her way throughout the congregation. It wasn't just a little short walk down a part of an aisle. She took the whole congregation down one aisle, down the last aisle. I was privileged to be her last big hug before she went back up to the stage. She is, a, again, a very anointed, a very loving, a very caring pastor for her flock that has been assigned to her here at the Virginia Conference. She had with her Bishop Swanson from Mississippi, and he was her pastor when she was 13 years old in Georgia. There were also two uh, musicians who did the music and led the singing. They were from Georgia. You know, you hear that Georgia's kind of like a Bible belt there, I think. And there's a lot of spirituality there. Well, they're sharing it with us. There was a lot of good going on at annual conference. And I say, let's listen to Bishop, Bishop Sharma. And while we've been praying, we got her now. Cho was preparing us for her. We got her. Let's let her help us. And I think we can go forth in love and peace and increase the fold in the kingdom of God. Again, thank you. And I've got uh, daily advocate readings and the book of reports here at front if anybody wants to take a quick look at them um, before you leave today. <laughs>